From the Great Wall of Ancient Times to the superstructures of today, China's relationship with construction has always reflected its ambition. But in the 21st century, that ambition has gone into overdrive. But how are they doing it? Hit that subscribe button because this is the most extreme construction story on the planet, and we're just getting started. In the annals of modern engineering, few achievements rival the grandeur and ambition of the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge. Officially opened in 2018 after nearly a decade of planning and six years of continuous construction, the bridge stretches a staggering 55 kilometers across the Pearl River Delta, linking three of China's most vital economic zones, Hong Kong, Zhuhai, and Macau. To grasp the magnitude of this accomplishment, one must consider both the scale and the sea it spans. The Lingding Yang Channel, known for its shifting currents and dense marine traffic, posed formidable challenges. Yet Chinese engineers devised a revolutionary solution, the Bridge Island Tunnel Model. This design includes two artificial islands that anchor an undersea tunnel, allowing massive container ships and oil tankers to pass above, while traffic flows undisturbed below. From there, the road returns to the surface, continuing across a series of elegant cable-stayed bridges. Perhaps most extraordinary was the precision involved in laying the immersed tunnel sections. These 33 massive steel tubes, each the length of a football field, were lowered to the seabed and connected with a margin of error no greater than 4 centimeters, a feat that drew applause from engineering institutions worldwide. But the bridge is more than a marvel of technology. It is a symbol. It reflects China's desire to integrate regions economically, to bind cities that once functioned independently, and to create a seamless corridor of trade and travel. Once, a journey from Hong Kong to Zhuhai might have taken four hours by land, weaving through congested roads and customs checkpoints. Today, that same trip can be made in just 40 minutes. To the traveler crossing this bridge for the first time, it may feel like little more than a convenient shortcut. But to those who understand its story, the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge is a quiet testament to perseverance, unity, and vision that reaches far beyond concrete and steel. Travel inland to the mountainous provinces of Guizhou and Yunnan, and you'll encounter a very different kind of bridge. One that doesn't challenge the sea, but the sky itself. Towering above the clouds, the Beipan Zhang Bridge once held the title of the world's tallest bridge, suspended a breathtaking 565 meters, or 1,854 feet, above the deep canyon floor. That's taller than the Empire State Building. Building in this remote, rugged landscape posed unique obstacles. The cliffs were steep, the fog was thick, and wind speeds could change without warning. Traditional construction methods would not do. Instead, engineers turned to a technique known as moving formwork, a carefully controlled process that allowed concrete towers to rise segment by segment like precisely stacked blocks. Each form was positioned and poured with utmost care, supported by cranes perched on temporary platforms bolted into the mountain itself. The bridge's towers were not just tall, they were intelligent. To cope with temperature swings between summer heat and winter frost, engineers used a material called smart concrete. This concrete can regulate its internal temperature and reduce the risk of cracking over time. Embedded sensors monitor stress levels in real time, feeding data back to control centers for continuous evaluation. Construction was anything but rushed. Each component was pre-tested, each material vetted against decades of potential wear. And today, the bridge endures not only as a vital transportation link, but as a symbol of human ingenuity triumphing over nature's most intimidating features. To older generations who recall a time when mountain travel in this region meant narrow roads and hours of switchbacks, the Baipan Jiang Bridge is a wonder, something once unimaginable, now part of everyday life. While the Baipan Jiang Bridge represents vertical ambition, the story of the Sanyan Bridge in Beijing reflects a different kind of genius, speed. In November 2015, the world watched with fascination as a major urban bridge in the heart of China's capital was replaced in less than two days. In just 43 hours, the old structure was dismantled, removed, and replaced with a fully functional new bridge. To put this in perspective, in many countries, similar projects stretch across months, sometimes years, due to road closures, permit delays, and material backlogs. The project succeeded through the use of prefabrication. Large bridge segments were constructed off-site in a controlled environment, ensuring precision and minimizing the risk of weather-related delays. At the appointed hour, the old bridge was lifted away using massive hydraulic platforms. Then one by one, the new sections were slid into place with transporter machines, a process choreographed like a ballet but with machinery weighing thousands of tons. 
There were setbacks. One piece of the old bridge turned out to be heavier than expected, requiring emergency recalibration of equipment. Yet the team pressed on, working through the night under floodlights and freezing temperatures. By the end of the second day, traffic was flowing once again, so seamlessly that many Beijing residents had no idea what had occurred. For older observers, especially those who recall decades of gridlock and crumbling overpasses in urban centers, the transformation was astonishing. It became a case study in efficiency, drawing praise from global engineers and city planners alike, and everyone kept saying China built this in 43 hours while the US can't do it in 20 years. As of today, China is home to more than 960,000 bridges, a staggering number that speaks not only to the nation's scale, but to its commitment to connectivity. This figure includes footbridges over irrigation canals, viaducts spanning entire river systems, and colossal crossings built to support high-speed rail. China's rail network, which covers more than 40,000 kilometers, relies heavily on bridges. In fact, nearly half of all high-speed rail lines run atop elevated tracks, an approach that minimizes land disruption, avoids obstacles, and ensures smooth travel across challenging terrain. This wasn't always the case. In 1988, China had virtually no expressways and limited motor vehicle infrastructure. Today, it boasts over 84,000 miles of motorway, surpassing even the United States in sheer length. This remarkable transformation didn't happen by accident. It was the result of decades-long policy planning, vast public investment, and a belief that infrastructure is the backbone of national progress. These bridges are more than engineering feats. They are instruments of unity. They carry workers from rural homes to urban jobs. They transport food, medicine, and opportunity. From the famed steel spans of the Yangtze River to the quiet timber bridges nestled in rice farming regions, each structure tells a story. A story of change, of movement, and of a nation lifting itself, literally and figuratively, into the future. The geographical diversity of China presents a trial for any builder. From high altitude plateaus in Tibet to earthquake-prone zones in Sichuan, from muddy deltas to soft seabeds in the east, every project is a unique puzzle. In the 20th century, civil engineering innovations were often imported from the west. Today, however, the roles have reversed. International experts now look to China as a testing ground for new methods and technologies. Take for instance the use of AI-powered structural monitoring, systems embedded into bridges and tunnels that continuously assess vibrations, heat, moisture, and weight stress. These tools don't just monitor, they predict. If a cable is weakening, the system will know before it snaps. If ground movement suggests seismic risk, early alerts are sent to maintenance crews. Materials have evolved too. New composites are designed to withstand both typhoons and extreme heat. In some areas, roads and bridges are coated with solar absorbing tiles that reduce ice formation in winter months. Even foreign leaders have taken notice. In 2019, US President Donald Trump, during a televised town hall, commented that China's infrastructure projects often take months instead of decades, drawing an unflattering comparison to delays in American public works. This isn't merely about speed, it's about readiness. Chinese infrastructure is built with long-term use in mind, planned for 100 years, not 20. In a world of rising populations, extreme weather, and shifting economic tides, such foresight may prove to be China's greatest asset. Behind the scenes of every megastructure lies a vast and intricate web of planning. These projects are not built with guesswork, but with rigorous foresight and discipline that can take years before ground is ever broken. For the Sanyan Bridge project, a series of 3D computer simulations were carried out months in advance. These digital models were not mere animations, they predicted structural stress points, weight distribution, thermal expansion, and even traffic rerouting during construction. Every bolt, beam, and girder was accounted for long before arriving on site. To align the new bridge segment with the existing road network, on a city street bustling with movement, engineers used a dual navigation system. China's own Beidou satellite system worked in tandem with terrestrial laser guidance accurate to within centimeters. In the end, the deviation from the planned alignment was just 9 millimeters, a fraction thinner than a pencil's eraser. This level of accuracy would be difficult even in laboratory conditions, let alone on a public highway in the middle of an active metropolis. Yet it illustrates a vital principle. Rapid infrastructure must be grounded in discipline, not shortcuts. In the past, nations like Britain, France, and the United States led the global narrative on engineering and transportation. But today, China is not only building for itself, it is building for the world. 
Through the Belt and Road Initiative, China has established infrastructure partnerships across over 60 countries spanning Africa, Southeast Asia, Latin America, and the Middle East. These projects include everything from cross-border rail lines and cargo ports to modern power grids and information superhighways. Importantly, China's contributions often go beyond concrete and steel. Included in these agreements are training programs for local engineers, workshops for construction crews, and knowledge exchanges with local universities. In Kenya, for instance, the Chinese-built Mombasa-Nairobi Standard Gauge Railway included a full-scale program to train Kenyan workers in railway technology. In Laos, engineers received direct mentorship on tunnel boring methods adapted from Chinese mountain projects. This new model of development is as much about exporting expertise as it is about exporting infrastructure. It signals a quiet but profound shift. That knowledge once created in Western capitals is now more widely shared, and nations long overlooked are gaining access to the blueprints of modernity. To truly appreciate what China is accomplishing today, one must recall what it has overcome. Barely a century ago, the country was fragmented by internal conflict, burdened by colonial interference, and devastated by famine and poverty. There were few roads, bridges rarer still. Railways, where they existed, were often laid down by foreign powers for their own advantage, but that era is gone. Today, China boasts over 40,000 kilometers of high-speed rail, the largest such network in the world. Trains glide at speeds over 300 kilometers per hour, connecting cities once days apart in just a few hours. Bridges span rivers once considered unnavigable, and tunnels cut through mountains that had isolated entire regions for centuries. The transformation did not happen overnight. It was built on long-term investment in education, engineering, and institutional discipline. It took decades of policy continuity and the training of generation after generation of civil planners, architects, and scientists. What the world sees today in China's infrastructure is the end product of decisions made by people who understood that real progress takes time, patience, and vision. These bridges, railways, and roads are not merely conduits for cars or trains. They are monuments to national resilience and the will to rise. And yet, despite the bridges already built and the skylines already reshaped, China's vision for infrastructure is far from finished. What lies ahead is not just expansion, but transformation. Planes that would once have belonged to the pages of science fiction are now finding real-world footing. Among the most talked about proposals is an underwater rail tunnel stretching all the way from mainland China to Taiwan. If realized, it would be the longest and most complex subsea transportation project in human history, an endeavor so bold that even seasoned engineers from previous eras may pause in disbelief. For older generations, many of whom witnessed China rise from the rural simplicity to technological superpower in a single lifetime, such plans may inspire a complex mix of feelings. Wonder at the scale of progress, pride in national achievement, but also a sense of disorientation. The quiet rural lanes of the past are giving way to smart highways paved with solar panels capable of wirelessly charging electric vehicles as they move. It's a kind of magic that would have been unthinkable just a few decades ago. Meanwhile, logistics centers, once bustling with dock workers and clerks, are being reimagined as automated hubs run by artificial intelligence where decisions are made in milliseconds by algorithms that respond to weather, traffic, and supply needs in real time. For many older citizens who labored in such sectors, the shift may feel both breathtaking and bittersweet. Where human effort once reigned, machines now hum. And then there's the dream of ultra-high-speed maglev trains, racing at over 600 kilometers per hour, shrinking once distant cities into the span of a morning commute. For elders who remember the creaking wheels of old trains, this leap feels like a ride into the unknown. It's progress, yes, but also a farewell to a slower, more tactile world. The truth is, the next generation of engineers in China won't simply be building bridges or tunnels. They'll be reimagining how people live, move, and connect across the map. The legacy of infrastructure is evolving, not as a monument to the past, but as a gateway to the future. And through it all, the work continues. Cranes still dot the horizon. Blueprints still unroll across drafting tables. And as the world watches, one thing remains certain. China's story of construction is not yet finished. For both the young and the old, it is a story still being written. Tower by tower, tunnel by tunnel, dream by dream. Which of China's mega projects do you believe stands as the greatest symbol of its modern transformation? Share your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching this video with us and catch you in the next one.